GamerGrade.com Jay from GamerGrade here bringing you another video this time on HDR which stands for High Dynamic Range. HDR is a cutting edge technique for displaying far superior images on TVs and monitors. HDR TVs are first to hit the market with high end displays already available as I speak in December 2016. But HDR PC monitors are yet to make an appearance due to the lack of HDR content specific to PC users available at this time. But rest assured this is all about to change in 2017. Now 4K is well and truly accepted as the next stage in high resolution viewing, HDR is no doubt the next big thing in display tech and experts are saying we should all be much more excited about this than even 4K. So what exactly is HDR and why is it so important? At its most basic level, it's the ability to display a much wider and richer range of colours, closer to what we see in real life, much brighter whites and deeper darker blacks, resulting in a much more vivid, dynamic, lifelike image. HDR technology also preserves details in the brightest and darkest areas of a picture that are lost using current standards. Therefore, contrast and colour are the two main factors to keep in mind in relation to what HDR does. There's currently two types of HDR to choose from, one from Dolby called Dolby Vision and the other from the UHD Alliance called Ultra HD Premium. Also known as HDR10, I will be using UHD Premium and HDR10 interchangeably throughout this video. We'll start with Ultra HD Premium which, unlike Dolby Vision, is a completely non-proprietary open standard. UHD Premium was created by a consortium of TV manufacturers, broadcasters and film producers, who together form the UHD Alliance. As with most new tech, HDR is open to abuse and that's what the Ultra HD Premium logo aims to prevent. By defining a set of standards for what TV manufacturers can label a HDR capable TV, buyers can have peace of mind that they are getting the real deal. So long as a TV has the Ultra HD Premium logo, then it will support the full defined specs for genuine HDR content. The logo will also appear on Ultra HD Blu-ray discs which for the record can deliver a colossal 100 megabits per second. As mentioned, contrast and colour are the two main factors to keep in mind in relation to what HDR does. First up the contrast, which refers to the difference between the lightest level of a display, or the peak brightness, and the darkest level of a display, known as the black level. The greater the difference between the peak brightness and the black level, the greater the contrast. Both peak brightness and the black level are measured in what's known as nits. And before you ask, yes, it's spelt exactly the same way as the nits you get in your hair. Nits is a term that's been adopted by the TV industry to indicate the brightness of a display, and it should be noted that one nit is equal to the light emitted from a single candle. The difference between these two measurements of peak brightness and black level is known as the contrast ratio. Ultra HD premium TVs have to meet specific standards for peak brightness and black level measurements, as laid out by the UHD premium standard of at least 1000 nits peak brightness and less than 0.05 nits black level. For comparison, most current standard LED TV screens in use today offer between 300 and 500 nits, giving indication of the much greater luminosity required for HDR10. HDR10 can actually support up to 4000 nits peak brightness, but the current target the standard requires is 1000 nits. The second most important factor for HDR is colour, and to be truly UHD Premium certified, a TV must be able to process what's known as a 10-bit colour depth which itself is a signal which produces over a billion different colours. To put this in perspective, current Blu-ray can only process around 16 million different colours, or 8-bit colour. This is far less than a billion, resulting in HDR images looking far more realistic and much more pleasing to the eye. The TV must also be capable of displaying everything in the REC 2020 colour space. You may notice some TVs will simply be labelled HDR, but do not possess the UHD Premium certification or Dolby Vision branding. In these cases, these TVs will not offer the best possible HDR experience and are best avoided, since they will most likely have an inferior panel that doesn't meet the minimum HDR10 specification requirements. It's also worth noting that it's not compulsory to use the UHD Premium logo, with some manufacturers confusingly using their own branding to represent their UHD HD10 range of products. For example, LG labels their UHD10 TVs as HDR Pro, so it certainly pays to 
do a bit of research on your preferred brand's line of HDR displays. The second of the two types of HDR available is from Dolby, conveniently called Dolby Vision, but is it a better choice than the UHD Premium version? According to the specs on paper, Dolby Vision is significantly better. Dolby Vision has a superior 12-bit colour depth, as opposed to a 10-bit colour depth for HDR10, and a peak brightness target of 4000 nits. Dolby Vision can actually support up to 10,000 nits, as opposed to just 1000 nits for HDR10. Just like HDR10, the TV must also be capable of displaying everything in the Rec 2020 colour space. Unlike HDR10, Dolby Vision content also includes dynamic frame-by-frame -frame metadata to tell the screen exactly how to display each frame of the video, adjusting contrast on the fly, maximising every scene's visual impact. Dolby Vision can individually process over 170,000 frames within a two-hour film. UHD Premium, on the other hand, is not capable of doing this and only possesses static metadata that cannot be adjusted on the fly. So that all makes a pretty significant difference, but there aren't many consumer TVs that can achieve much over 1000 nits at this time. Dolby's higher numbers are certainly impressive technically, but they don't translate to any real world difference due to the lack of currently available hardware and content. Even though Dolby Vision is a clear winner in terms of specification, it's a closed proprietary system that requires licensing fees from manufacturers, resulting in more expensive expensive hardware. This itself has already put Dolby Vision at a disadvantage since HDR10 is a completely free open standard. Microsoft's Xbox One S, Sony's PS4 Pro and most set-top boxes and Ultra HD Blu-ray players all exclusively support HDR10 and don't support Dolby Vision, which is another major drawback for Dolby. The one device Dolby does have on its side, however, is the new Chromecast. In October 2016, Google announced that the Chromecast Ultra would support Dolby Vision, making it compatible with any Dolby Vision TV. According to Dolby, it's the only streaming device that delivers a seamless playback experience, no matter what HDR content you select, and the first to support Dolby Vision. Bear in mind it's very early days for Dolby Vision, while HDR10 has already had a big head start. But the good news is that most content mastered in Dolby Vision also carries the HDR10 metadata, so will play fine on any HDR10 hardware. Likewise, if you're to buy a Dolby Vision TV, it will still play all HDR10 content seamlessly. The bottom line is you can easily future-proof yourself by simply buying into Dolby Vision, since Dolby Vision hardware covers all HDR grounds. As Dolby Vision becomes more widely available, we will see what sort of price hike is required over HDR10 exclusive hardware. Since Dolby Vision offers a superior experience and could grow in popularity over time, it would be wise to make sure your TV supports both standards from the get-go making a multi-HDR ready TV the best option, like this LG OLED TV showing now. So when it comes to HDR, is organic LED or OLED still a better option than regular LED? Even though LED TVs have seen many major improvements in recent years, OLED is still lighter, thinner, uses less energy, displays a superior richer image, offers far better viewing angles and has dropped in price considerably, although it's still more expensive than regular LED. Unless your primary concern is value, then an OLED based HDR TV is the way to go. However, it's not quite that simple since OLED TVs are unable to produce a 1000 nit peak brightness, which is the minimum requirement for the UHD premium standard. This meant that the UHD Alliance had to come up with a second set of technical requirements specifically for OLED TVs, which almost halves the required peak brightness level to 540 nits instead of 1000, but also significantly reduces the black level requirement to 0.0005 nits, much darker than the LED requirement of just 0.05 nits. So, the main advantage of LED TVs over OLED is the much higher peak brightness, but in most cases a picture with a much deeper black level is superior, and many would argue 540 nits is bright enough. This means there are now two standards TV manufacturers must adhere to to qualify for the UHD Premium stamp of approval. One standard for LED TVs, and another standard for OLED TVs. So, will everything you watch be HDR if you buy a HDR TV? Unfortunately, no. No. 
first up the content we play needs to be specifically mastered with HDR in mind to take advantage of your shiny new HDR TV, otherwise it won't make the blindest bit of difference. Luckily HDR mastered content is on the rise and we now have Ultra HD Blu-ray movies and players. The BBC as well as online streaming services like Netflix, Amazon and YouTube all fully supporting HDR, allowing content creators to deliver their content with ease. Incidentally you will need a broadband connection of at least 25 megabits to watch streamed HDR, although Netflix uses some something called adaptive streaming that gives HDR priority over resolution in the case of insufficient bandwidth, proving HDR adds more to the viewing experience than resolution. It's still in its infancy in 2016, but no doubt HDR will explode in 2017 and beyond. It's worth noting that HDR is actually a mandatory part of the Ultra HD Blu-ray spec, so all Ultra HD Blu-ray players and discs will be HDR compliant as standard. To display HDR, your TV must be at least HDMI 2.0a compliant, and any TV with the Ultra HD Premium label will be compatible by default, making it easy for buyers to simply check for the logo and check out. A quick primer on HDMI is worth noting here. The earlier HDMI 1.4 standard released back in May 2009, allowed 4K resolutions, but only at 30 frames per second, which is fine for movies but not really for current day gaming and many TV broadcasts, which now demand 60 frames per second. To fix this, HDMI 2.0 was launched in September 2013, allowing the full 60 frames per second at 4K resolution, while also supporting the full 12-bit colour range. Then in April 2015, the HDMI 2.0a standard was launched, which specifically add support for HDR. So will you need to buy a new HDMI cable specifically for the HDR 2.0a standard? It may surprise you, but probably not. It's worth noting that there's no such thing as HDMI 1.4 or 2.0 cables, or even UHD or HDR cables for that matter. They all simply come marked as two standards, either standard speed or high speed HDMI cables. As long as you have a cable that was purchased in 2010 or later and is truly certified a high speed cable, then you should be good to go. One drawback however is how long the cable is. The longer the cable, the more likely you will experience problems. We recommend sticking to approximately 12 foot or below for the most reliable HDR signals at consistent peak bandwidth. So what's the state of play for HDR and PC gamers? While PC monitors lag behind their TV counterparts in HDR implementation, and we are yet to see any HDR specific monitors for sale, one area of the PC that's been HDR ready for over a year now is the mid to high end graphics card market thanks to the healthy competition between Nvidia and AMD. Nvidia has been implementing HDR into its GPUs since the 900 series and currently certifies all its Pascal based models as HDR ready. AMD is slightly later to the game with the 390X and current Polaris lineup as their first HDR capable cards. So if you've purchased a decent graphics card relatively recently, there's an excellent chance that your GPU is good to go. So what about PC games? Will your current collection be in glorious HDR when HDR monitors finally become available? Newer games will certainly be released with HDR in mind, but older games won't support HDR and will require patching. These older non-patched games will still play fine on HDR equipped systems, but you just won't see any benefits without some fresh HDR code patched into the mix. Fortunately, leveraging HDR's superior technology will only require a fairly straightforward mapping process that expands SDR color maps to HDR ranges via algorithmic translation. This means for developers to provide HDR patches for their SDR titles will not require massive effort. Popular games in future receiving studio remasters will no doubt have added HDR support, and the mod community is also likely to step in where manufacturers won't with older classic titles. Until HDR monitors and games start arriving for the PC, it's going to be all Blu-ray and online streaming content for now, with HDR console games already starting to appear. It may be a while before HDR arrives on the PC, so for now, just have HDR in mind for your future upgrades, and enjoy your current monitor before it gets replaced. 
To conclude, it's unclear who the ultimate victor will be, Dolby Vision or HDR10, aka Ultra HD Premium. But there's no doubt there's never been a better time to invest in HDR, with many available screens supporting both standards for peace of mind. Although 4K or UHD has been the buzzword in display technology in recent years, in general it's failed to get many buyers excited over their existing full HD displays. This is because at normal viewing distance, the human eye doesn't really notice more pixels above a 2K resolution. This is where HDR will completely change that. Due to its far superior color depth, more pixels end up looking much better, even though the human eye can't discern the individual pixels at normal viewing distance. For this reason, many argue 4K should never have been released without the much more impressive HDR, and content creators now have more reasons to produce 4K HDR content than just 4K content. So buying a multi-HDR ready TV that supports both standards is a smart move, as HDR no doubt paves the way for the foreseeable future of how we will consume all our visual content for many years to come. Okay, so that's the end of the video. If you found it useful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from Gamer Grade. It helps me massively and will allow me to make more and higher quality videos in future. I'm Jay, hope to see you in the next one. Visit GamerGrade.com